Hi, I'm Morgan, CEO of Blavity Inc., and this is The Provokers. Mother lover, you gon' love this. Graduated from a rebel to a revolutionary in my area, they love this. I'm a wreck it like I'm revving the engine, heaven's ascension, every dimension, give me attention. Look at my soul, look at my heart, look at my hope. Got the world on my back, but I carry it though. Tell him God got my hand, I ain't I got the truth. It takes a special person to create a successful media business, and Morgan DeBond is doing just that through her black millennial media brand, Blavity. She's provoked a generation of millennials breaking cultural stereotypes. Morgan tells stories for an audience so many people ostracize yet passionately try to replicate. We talk with Morgan about how she inspires the black millennial community and why big brands are paying attention. Making sure that we're always putting our community first means that we're never going to be bothered by what other people think. Blavity in general is created around this idea of like how do we create our own platforms and distribution channels so we can tell our own stories and own our own narratives, talk about our own heroes, um, and we don't need to ask permission to do that if you own your own distribution channels. I'm really agnostic actually about like what Blavity becomes. I care more about the audience and the community that we're solving for. Like, you're gonna get what you're gonna get, so yeah. it's um. Yeah, it's definitely freeing to have created a space that's a reflection of like my own identity and the identity of my co-founders. Our content is probably 30-40% at this point user generated. So people are pitching stories on a day-to-day -day basis. Like we probably get 30 to 50 stories a day that people are pitching. Either they are writing it themselves and then submitting it for, for consideration, or they're just like, hey, there's something going on and we need to talk about it. Um, so that makes sure the, that our content stays fresh and that's also why we get a lot of exclusives and originals that people are like, where did you find this? Mm -hmm. so our reporting team and our news team is not based here in LA and that I think helps us make sure that uh, it's not just people in ivory towers in New York and LA deciding what the rest of the black community needs to be reading about today. And how large is the Blavity audience? So Blavity reaches around 20 to 30 million people a month. Um, we have a strongly engaged group of people who are coming back on a weekly basis. So the unique audience is anywhere between 10 to 15 million people. At the content level, you know, over 50% of our audience isn't necessarily black on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, black culture is American culture at this point. I mean, that's been proven over and over again. You just mentioned how black culture is culture, mm -hmm. right? Uh, top musicians, top athletes. At the same time, black culture is is hurting, right? When you look at, you know, what we're seeing with police and everything, like what's what's your thought if in one instance we are we are the culture, in mm -hmm. another instance, you know, there's a feeling of persecution, like how do you how do you feel about that? So I should I should maybe say black culture from an entertainment perspective is universal. Um, entertainment style fashion. Now black thought, black um, leadership black power is not universal. That's not something that people are comfortable with on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, we read an article about um, Cardi B popping off on Trump. Everybody wants to read that. They're like, yay, Cardi B, right? Now we say Cardi B is advocating for female inmates to not necessarily be in jail during Mother's Day. I'm not sure that's gonna be a universal topic that non-black people are gonna be as interested in. I find that interesting where the entertainment is is popular, right? Mm -hmm. The lifestyle, but when you want to empower, you know, Real issues. yeah, yeah, it's, it's, that's definitely clearly we're not there yet. If if it was true, then we would be much further on as the people, given the the power that we have with our voice. Okay, so if I'm a brand, mm -hmm. how can Blavity help me? If you're a brand, you should be considering Blavity and Black culture. Um, for a few different reasons. One, we set trends. So if you're a part of a group of people and you're associated with a group of people who are setting trends, it's gonna make sure that you have a competitive advantage over people who are not. Um, two, I think that we're like social, our social commentary online. So on Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, 
we are actually influencing other people's social opinions. So this comes up a lot actually during elections where the black demographic may not be a target for like actually voting because not as many people turn out to vote except for like older black women. Mm -hmm. But we do influence other people's voting decisions, right? And um, other candidates have made the mistake of not catering to like the young black demo, getting on their bad side, and then they're just getting ripped apart. I do think that brands should stand up for what they believe in if it's in alignment with their mission and their values. I mean, I think companies do that whether we all agree with it or not. Like Chick-fil-A, for example, I don't agree with Chick-fil-A, right? But it is clear what their mission and their values are and they get behind issues and, and people and make business decisions around their mission and their values. I think that's smart for companies to do. When you're building the culture here, like what do you take into consideration? Well, I think one is creativity. It's like making sure that the space is some place that people feel inspired. Um, of course, amazing views. We work really long hours, so yeah. making sure that it's some place where if you're looking out, you're like, I have perspective. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm doing work. I'm doing work for my community. It might be a lot. It might be tough. Um, you know, the expectations here are very, very high. Mm -hmm. But the the pressure and the opportunity cost is also very, very high. The stakes are high for what we do. Is is there a point of view that you were ever scared to take? Not really. Not really. Like, we don't really have anything that's off limits. Um, we might, maybe we should have things off limits, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, you know, there's certainly things where we have internal discussions. Um, there's brand deals that we've been offered that we've said no to. Um, because we didn't agree with the, the value or the offer that they were trying to put in front of our community um, and they were unwilling to budge. You know, so to the extent that there are things that aren't in alignment with our own mission, um, you know, we're not afraid to say no to those. Touching on when you say you're unapologetic, is there a certain way that you, that you speak with people who are not within the black community? Um. Mm, that's a great question. I think that when the, the way to be unapologetic is to actually not even consider them, like to just do you. And if it winds up being for somebody else, great, we're happy you're here. If it's not for you, that's fine. It wasn't designed for you anyways, yeah. right? And, and I think making sure that we're always putting our community first means that we're never going to be bothered by what other people think. Mm -hmm. Like we're never going to tone it down, you know, yeah. like we don't code switch on our articles no, because for why, sure. for who, code yeah. switch to what? Mm -hmm. When your investors come to you and they invest, do they, do the, does the content you create factor into their perceptions? You know, I think maybe initially people were a little bit worried, like this is risky, what are they going to talk about? Yeah. Um, not anymore. You know, being five years into the company, like people really I think understand our balance of like brand safe content, yeah. being true to who we are, um, being provocative and, and being okay with that. You know, I think so that that winds up being all right. I think our investors are more of worried about like as we grow, how do we maintain our culture and our brand as we continue to scale. So that's something that I'm constantly thinking about, which you know mostly ties to our employees and making sure that they understand our, our mission, our principles, and how to make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. How do you balance the stories you want to tell while also making money? We make money in a lot of different ways. I think what's what's amazing about being a news publication is actually they're very separate parts of the company. So even when you see the office, our sales team is not even sitting where our editorial team is. Oh. So we definitely have a wall in between and make sure that the editorial stories are completely unbiased by the brands and partners that we have on board. Because so many people are focused on online community, it's really important that we think about bringing people together in person. And we have so many heroes and champions and folks that you're following on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. And rarely do you actually get a chance to meet them or hear them in real life. So it actually has been something that's fundamental to our business and actually bringing our content, our culture that's online, offline yeah. has been something that's been a unique strategy for us, particularly given um, like our millennial audience.